Good morning, everyone. It's Rod with MarineHowTo.com from my uh, temporary lab here this morning. And what I'm showing you today, you're probably wondering, what the hell is Rod up to now? So what I'm up to now is I posted a video not too long ago on my Facebook group, Boat Electrical Systems, of a 280 amp hour uh, battery pack put in parallel with a 10 amp hour, 7 amp hour battery. Today I'm using some 10 amp hours. These are batteries that I bring home from the farm. I use these to power my security cameras, remote security cameras. And uh, so I've got a, somebody on that post made the comment that, oh, well, yeah, but if you connect that to a big master, uh, Winston battery cell pack, you would see totally different numbers. And nothing could be further from the truth. And the reason for that is because the, the voltage, the current that flows between this pack and this pack is entirely dependent on the internal resistance of both packs and the voltage difference. So right now this battery, I just literally took it off the discharger, which was over here. And uh, I'll turn the camera so you, I'll, I'll point out what it looks like. So this battery was just discharged and capacity tested. It's 10 amp hour, it delivered 10.127 amp hours. And I took it down to a 10.2 volt cutoff. Right now there's a little bit of a rebound voltage. It's at 10.609 which is about as low as you're going to get it because when you drop a lithium battery down to its cutoff point, the voltage will rebound naturally. It's no different than a lead acid battery in that regard. They both rebound. So anyway, what I'm going to do is uh, I have a power supply here that's going to activate this relay. I'm using silicone wire between the, the relay and the, and the battery and the BMS. You can see that that battery is connected to the load side of the BMS. This is a JK BMS 200 amp. And uh, as you can see, my lithium pack is still at 13.57. I literally just shut off the charge not too long ago from recharging it from the recent capacity test on this battery. And by the way, this battery is uh, 15 years old. These cells were born May 9th of 2009. And uh, the capacity test for that pack, I'll show you that real quick too. I just capacity tested this one yesterday because I'm going to be doing an article on the 15th birthday of this battery. And as we can see, this is what it looked like. 30 amp discharge, constant current, uh, was down on 412 with 24. It delivered 400.227 amp hours. These are 400 amp hour cells. So this pack has outperformed anything I ever expected. It's amazing. I could, would have never believed it if you told me this in 2009 that I would get 15 years out of this battery and I'd still get 100% of my capacity. In fact, there were a ton of people online who said, oh, calendar aging, you're going to ruin your battery. It's gonna never going to last as long as they claim. Well, sorry, those people had no idea what they were talking about because I got living proof right here. And I invite anybody who doubts this data to come sit here in my office and watch a discharge test. No, no, no qualms. I have, I, I, I'm fully transparent. Anyway. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have you guys shit your pants here for a minute because if we listen to internet lore and rumor, what I'm doing right now is going to blow the house up. This battery is 40 times larger than this 10 amp hour battery. Here's a sister to that battery right here. You can see that it's a 10 amp hour battery. I brought them home to uh, test capacity and make sure they're still doing okay because I left these things outside all winter just powering the security cameras. But not charging, just, just charge up to full and then I just powered the cameras all winter. So anyway, this battery is at 10.632 now. You can see the voltage is rebounding a little bit. And uh, this battery is at 13.6. It's going down because it just came off charge about an hour ago. But the fluke meter here is set to inrush. In terms of inrush meters, these are the only ones that we found that actually work and give a fairly accurate representation of inrush. We've tried Amprobe meters, which are also made by the owned by Fluke. They don't work. We've tried Mastec. We've tried Unities. We've tried every other brand out there. None of them work for Inrush. They claim Inrush, but they don't work. So, and the, the way that we, the way that we test that is we use a shunt. And we put this voltmeter across the front, and then we divide and we do the math. We can see the voltage drop across the shunt from the Inrush, and that's how we calibrate our meters. So anyway. Um, I'm going to do this now, and uh, everything's going to blow up. My house is going to be ruined. Are you ready for this? One, two, three. Oh, my God, people. <laughs> Holy shit. 
Oh my God, everything blew up. The house is on fire. What are we going to do? <laughs> 44.9 amps. Now that's a lot more than this battery should be able to handle. However, this battery does have a BMS in it. I know that because I've tested it multiple times and it does cut off at 10.10 10 volts. It does cut off on high voltage and it's supposed to cut off on high current, but apparently this 44.9 amps was not enough to trip that because again, it's only a quick inrush. It doesn't, it doesn't last for very long. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off inrush and I'm just going to show you how parity voltage and the reason I'm showing you this is because why the manufacturers tell you to get your batteries at the same voltage before you put them in parallel or series is because when you put two batteries in parallel, they don't just balance out. Everybody thinks they do, but they don't. We still have to abide by Ohm's law. So once once the cells become at what we call parity voltage, and that's not Al Yankovic parity, it's P-A-R-I-T-Y. So what I did as an ex experiment, I, I charged all these, I top balanced them, I discharged every test cell. So I knew the capacity, and then I discharged 50% of the capacity from this cell here. And then I put them back in parallel, and I set them aside, and I let them sit for a few weeks. And then I came back, and I took them out of parallel, and I discharged the cells. That one that I had discharged at 50% was only like 52.3%. So that was letting them sit for over two weeks, well over two weeks. So they don't just balance out. You need a charge voltage there to get them in balance. And that's why the manufacturers tell you that, because in series, the balance varieties will never balance. But in parallel, they'll eventually balance, but you have to have a charge voltage in order to make that happen. So that's why they tell you to do this. It's not because you're going to blow anything up at all, because you're not, as we can see. This, this current, when I put a 40 times larger battery in parallel with a 10 amp hour battery, nothing happened. The BMS didn't even trip. So I don't recommend doing this, obviously, but you can, and you're not going to blow anything up. So anyway, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of how quickly the parity voltages come together. So the closer this voltage gets to that voltage up there, the less and less current can flow between the batteries. And uh, it happens fairly quickly. You'll see. Ready? One, two, three. So now you can see how quickly that current's going down because this voltage is coming up very fast. And that voltage is dipping. We're now at 13.46 on the big bank and about 13.2 on this bank. And at that different voltage, we've only got so much current flowing. Now, this is not recommended for a battery of this size. But again, we still have not tripped the BMS in here. And I know it has one. So again, not recommended, but I'm just showing you why that you're not going to blow anything up. And once these voltages get to within a few millivolts of each other, that current will physically almost stop flowing entirely. It doesn't matter what the SOC of this is. It's all about voltage. Voltage is your pressure that moves current. So as these two voltages converge and get closer and closer, that current gets smaller and smaller. And that's why these battery cells here refuse to balance out without a charge current. I mean, you can leave them in parallel for as long as you want, but once they get in parity, there's no current flowing between the cells. That's all. Very simple stuff. Basic electrical engineering Ohm's law stuff. So anyway, I hope you guys can see what I'm what I'm trying to show here, and I hope this answers the question. I forget the guy's name who said it, but um, no, you were incorrect. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but it doesn't matter whether these are Eve cells or whether they're, you know, a big battery, 400 amp hours or 280 amp hours or 100 amp hours. It's dependent on the voltage difference and the in the internal resistance between the batteries. So anyway, this battery is pretty much brand new. It spent the winter outside charging some security cameras. When I brought it back, it was still at like 60% state of charge. So it's not, it has not been abused. Anyway, I hope this helps and I hope you don't worry about doing these things, but follow the manufacturer's instructions. It will give you the best life out of your batteries.